Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so right now I'm heading to Nikola Tesla Museum, as you can see that way. Tell me I'm the only one, only one. Hating is your type of thing. I understand. Moving like a plan and shit. It's how I am. I'm standing in front of Nikola Tesla Museum. I'm about to go in there and find out what they didn't teach us in school. You want to come along for the ride? Hi, I'm Tori, IG Travel Life Matters, and I'm here at the Tesla Museum with Mr. The Blair's, Blair's Vlog, Vlog. Yep. and we're going to see what Tesla was up to and how Edison stole a lot of his ideas. That's right. It's so ironic that I run into her and she's from Florida as well. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> I like Miami, right? Yes. Miami, that is crazy. And we got right? one Serbian guy here. One Serbian guy here. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> right, right? That's crazy. After giving a brilliant lecture at the American Society of Electrical Engineers, Tesla contacted George Westinghouse, owner and founder of the company which bears his name. Westinghouse decided to buy the patent for Tesla's system for the production, transmission, and use of polyphase alternating currents. This was a dream come true for Tesla, but also the beginning of new temptations. Tesla found himself in the middle of a ruthless fight between Edison and Westinghouse for market dominance. In popular science, this was known as the War of the Cowards. Edison tried in vain to prove the value of direct current. The benefits of Tesla's alternating current system quickly became obvious, especially for the transmission of electricity over long distances. When Westinghouse used Tesla's system to light the World Exhibition in Chicago in 1893, a decisive blow was struck to the supporters of direct current. The exhibition opened in May 1903 with spectacular light shows and a demonstration of the complete transmission system for alternating current. This removed the last hurdle to its universal adoption. The Chicago success helped Westinghouse to obtain a contract to build a hydroelectric power plant at the Niagara Falls. This historic event was perhaps the most significant step towards creating a second industrial revolution. of electricity. Uh, it consists of three main parts, primary coil, secondary coil, and the grounding. By applying the current from uh, electrical network, uh, the current uh, goes here, uh, which is where the high frequency current is created. Then that current flows through this primary coil, and that will create strong uh, magnetic field 
and uh, that uh, magnetic field will generate the current in the secondary <coughs> coil. That coil, uh, that current uh, has to go somewhere and it will go to the nearest grounding to the sphere. Before that, we'll see uh, the lightning uh, and that is the electrical discharge. So, the molecules of an air will be broken into ions. These ions will fill the space around the transformer and hit us all. So, we will all be conductors of this uh, current of half a million volts. For example, if you put your fingers in the socket, uh, which has uh, 220 volts, what will happen? You will probably die, and, pro and probably that will be the last thing you've done. Okay, but why you'll be perfectly safe now uh, when you will conduct this current of half a million volts? And the answer is, yes? Uh, the skin effect. Okay, so the skin, the skin effect says that a high frequency current with high voltage always, go, uh, uh, always goes uh, through the surface of the conductor. And we are conductors and that current will go through our skin, okay, that high frequency current. But the current of 220 volts is low frequency current with low voltage and it will go through your brain, heart, and will harm you, okay? So, now we'll uh, do some experiment to show you that there will be ions in this room and that the wireless transmission of electricity is possible. So okay. here, here you are. Here you are, just uh, come closer. Here you are. I'll see what Tesla is up to, okay? Does anybody here have this maker? One, two, three, okay, no pacemakers. And a pacemaker, boop, 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 boop. The device for the heart, okay. I think we don't have here. Um, and three simple rules for you who has the neon bulbs. So, keep your uh, neon bulbs straight with both of your hands. Uh, with both of your hands straight, okay? Straight, okay. that way. And at all times, stay, be, uh, stay behind the metal fence because if you're, uh, if you're closer to the transformer than the nearest ground in which is that sphere, the lightning will hit you. We don't want that to happen. Okay. <laughs> so, Any last words? <laughs> and this Any is last the words? <laughs> Back up a little bit. This is the loudest machine here. Uh, so just try to stay calm. Okay? And good luck. Good luck, Ryan. Uh, it's just happened many times. It's okay. It's okay? We're going to make it, right? Okay. <laughs> Babe, let's see what's going to happen. Babe, I think. I say good luck. Wow. I'm starting to freak out. No, why they didn't teach us this in school? I'm really upset. What? Thank you. Look at my tail. Let me see. Of 120,000 volts. Okay, uh, it has primary coil, secondary coil, and it doesn't have grounding, which is because I can be the grounding by myself. Okay. Okay. So I. I will Can need I three volunteers to try that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It, 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 it's okay. Just stand here. Oh, Where is your phone? Oh, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Volunteer and everything. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So because of this, flows through your skin and goes to the ground. Do you want to? Okay. Oh. Okay. And if you place your hand here, you won't feel anything, right? Because we don't have uh, electrical discharge. Okay, uh, so I want to uh, show, 
to show you that the currents always choose the shortest path to the ground. So pay attention, I will divide this uh, new bulb like this. So as you can see, this part uh, blows more than this part, which is because the current flows th uh, through this uh, part goes uh, through my arm to the ground and this part glows less okay so uh, Tesla's uh, uh, transformers uh, produce uh, electromagnetic waves which we call signals and signals are used very often in our time you've heard about TV radio signals a satellite, Wi-Fi, we can't imagine our life w uh, without them. That's right. And the Tesla was the first one to use signals to create the very first radio-controlled toy, which is the boat behind you. So please, everyone, uh, turn around and wait for me there. I'm delighted. They thought the Tesla may have laid the cable that connects uh, the boat with the remote control, but they tried so to find and the failed. Control. Then they uh, constructed other theories, and one of them was that uh, Tesla was monkey whisperer, that he uh, put the monkey in this boat, mm -hmm. and that monkey was steering the wheel and wheels while being uh, mind controlled by Tesla. Mm -hmm. Of course, that is ridiculous, but it shows us how uh, Tesla's transformers and uh, because of the different number of copper windings on the secondary coil, they uh, produce two uh, different signals uh, of two different uh, frequencies. And these signals are broadcast all around. On the boat, we have these two antennas. And when they uh, receive that signal, they send it to these two uh, transformers, which serves for the voltage amplification and when the voltage is uh, sufficient to activate the battery, mechanism of the boat uh, starts working. Now I would like to tell you something more about Tesla. Uh, Tesla died in America and uh, he was uh, buried there. Uh, when he died, his only uh, successor was his uh, nephew, Sava Kosanovich. Uh, Tesla didn't have a wife or children. Stavos Kosanovich examined the, the Tesla's body and sent the urn with Tesla's ashes here in Belgrade. And you can see uh, the urn with Tesla's ashes here in the museum in the last room. At the very end, it is important to mention that this is not just the Museum of Science and Technology, but the Museum of the History of Science and Technology, and at the same time, the Memorial Museum of Nikola Tesla. Thank you for your attention and please feel free to explore the rest of the museum. If you have any questions, come here uh, to the boat. Thank you once again. Okay. You said his um, ashes is here? Yes, you can see them in the sphere, which is in the last room. I will show you. Okay. Now we are heading to go take a look at Tesla himself and the ashes. I'm going to give you a quick run through, so whatever you want to read, you're going to have to just pause the video and go ahead and read that. That was Nikola Tesla Museum. Uh, what did you think of the information you just received? I still can't understand why they didn't teach us about him in school, man. You know? So now I'm going to do some research on him and see what I'll come up with. Hey, guys, don't forget, leave me a comment below. Tell me what you think about it. Peace.